How's it going everyone? My name is Michael SK and welcome back to Higurashi When They Cry Chapter 6. You guys like red text because that's kind of what we're getting close to. Remember when it was like a bright pink? Yeah, it's it's getting more and more red, which I don't really know what that's supposed to symbolize. Maybe it's how far Rena is gone or how far gone she's becoming. I don't know, but either way, it's a nice little detail, whatever it symbolizes. And we have actually just switched over to Rena. We were following Keiichi here to start this brand new day. And Keiichi is a very gullible person, if we, you know, have not caught on to that. He'll believe anything that sounds remotely believable, including a counter-argument to something that he just learned about. So, Keiichi also betrayed Rena already by going to somebody else and telling them a lot in kind of pieces of what oh geez excuse me of what Rena had told him and now uh now he doesn't really know if he should believe Rena. he is under the understanding now that Rena needs to understand that she is in the wrong but from what we've seen from her perspective i don't i don't know if that's the case it's getting a little confusing right not in a way of like i don't know what's right but like both of these characters now have different views, so that'll be fun to follow. I remember the plate number of the white van, and I also remember their faces. Oh yeah, that white van is here. Without a doubt, this was the or this was one of the vans that had been following me. So far, I've confirmed that three of the four cars have been following me. I could especially recall this white van because it followed me around the longest of all. The people who were in the other cars must be the lookouts, and the ones in this van must be tasked with direct contact. Oh, jeez, excuse me. I'm sorry. Like kidnapping or assassination, I just can't speak today. The lookouts secure the surroundings, and the ones in this van attack the target. That's a common maneuver involved in both kidnapping and assassination. The scrapbook said that too. If so, I'd better watch out because it was them, not the lookouts, who came to the school premises. I don't think they'll attack me while I'm at school. They're in the early stage of their covert operation now, covert, or, or, or however you pronounce it. I'm pretty sure it's covert, right? Like, like, we're all soldiers here. Hiding their fangs and claws until the last stage of their horrifying scheme. That's why they won't take action in the school, where people are watching. And this could also be an actual situation of, yeah, maybe Rena is looking into this too deeply, and she is in the wrong, and... And Keiichi might have a point that like, ah, oh, yeah, that's too far-fetched, and basically taking everything that Mion was telling him. So, this could be like in Chapter 1, where a lot of the things that were happening, maybe we shouldn't take them at face value. Perspective is so important. But it looked like they were talking with Chie-sensei in a very friendly way. I could only hear bits and pieces of their conversation, but it looked very suspicious. I tried to remember the chatter and the movements of their mouths and I played my memory of it like a videotape in my mind. Maido! Okay. What? What? I, I guess we just don't know what he's saying here? うちの事務屋から渡すように言われましたんで。どうですね。ありがとうございます。わ、空欄ですね。はい、お預かりします。はい、それでは。ります。I used the information I had to guess what was going on. I played the video again and again in my mind and also paused it and played it in slow motion again to check many times. Okay, yeah, Rena is not doing the right thing here. Then something unbelievably horrifying started to emerge. There's no doubt that they're acquainted with Chie-sensei, but I've never seen them visit this school before, so it's hard to believe that Chie-sensei is their contact. There's no doubt that they're the death squad under the direct control of the Sonozaki family. No. <laughs> they have the local accent which proves that they were chosen from the Sonozaki corpse. The death squad was talking to Chie-sensei. They know each other. What's their relationship? Who's Chie-sensei Chie anyway? I'm sorry. During the can the damn conflict- God damn, I'm really fucking up. Hinamizawa's school was closed and it was merged with the one in Okinomiya. 
But the Onigafuchi Guardians didn't accept that, and they made a part of the Forestry Service building into a school. But needless to say, the school they made didn't have a teacher, so it was only going to be a token form of resistance. But a teacher who had a strong passion for education felt sorry for the children, and she came to work there. That was Rumiko Chie-sensei. It was obviously strange. Teachers are government employees, and they normally belong to their prefectures. As long as they lie low and don't cause trouble, they don't get fired, and they don't get demoted. They can work up until the official retirement age, and they're guaranteed to get a fixed retirement fund. She was one of those government employees, but she defied the Board of Education and came to work for Hinamizawa. The villagers admire her as a teacher of passion. I had heard that Oryo Sonozaki herself successfully negotiated with the Board of Education that suspended Chie Sensei for defying their orders. It was easy to get an answer from this by connecting the dots. Chie Sensei was recruited by Oryo Sonozaki as a teacher to work at the school the Onigafuchi Guardians had created. Oh my god. I'm... I'm sorry, but like, no. Now that we've kind of seen another perspective, this kind of shows that no, this is this is not this is not what's happening. In other words, she was already working for for Oreo before she came here. As for the principal, he was the principal of the school in Hinamizawa from the beginning. He's a respected person of this region, and he's been closely associated with the three families for a long time. So that means this school has been under the control of the Sunozaki family all along. No. That's why Chie-sensei is acquainted with the Death Squad. It makes sense now. Chie-sensei confirmed that I came to school today, made a phone call, and called them here? I don't want to know why she called them here. If she called them just to monitor me, they'd wait near the gate until class was over. But they came onto the school premises. Why? Stop pretending to be a fool, Rena Ryugu. Do you think nothing will happen if you pre pretend not to notice it? Think, think hard, and calm down, Rena Ryugu. What will they try to do to me today in school? In school? How are they going to do anything with my classmates and friends around me? It's easy. Chase sensei will tell me to come to the teacher's office during the last class of the day. What about my clubmates? That's easy too. Chase sensei can easily make them go home early using her authority as a teacher. She can make up any reason she wants. Maybe the classroom is going to have carpentry work done today, so they can't stay in school. Yeah, so, in case you guys aren't, you know, up to speed, we've had this actual conversation without all these missing parts from Keiichi's perspective, because he was right there, and he listened in on it in the end of the last episode, so... You can tell that no, Rena is misinterpreting this, but it could also be a trap. It can look like, okay, this is nothing, but Rena is actually rightfully cautious because this could be something. Maybe not over the top like she's actually thinking it is, but we should always be cautious of everybody because there are some people to be aware of. There's obviously an antagonist of some sort. They clearly said they're ready to do it today. And what else? Yeah. I see. They gave Chie Sensei an envelope with some documents in it. That blank is an eerie phrase. Was my name supposed to be in the blank? Why is it left blank? What does that mean? I told you, Rena Ryugu. Do you still think that nothing will happen if you pretend not to notice it? Stop that. So what it must mean is that it's an order from higher up to... It says to make Rena Ryugu become blank. No, it's not. <laughs> it's really not. I took a peek from the shadows and I saw the principal taking documents out from the envelope and he started reading them. He looks stern. He looks he looked very serious. I wished I could take a peek at the documents, but I was too far away. I kept looking at him to see if he'd react at all, and then the envelope caught my eye. The envelope said Okonogi Gardeners, and it had some numbers that looked like a phone number. 
Fortunately, I have good eyesight. I memorized the number. If they're a death squad, the gardening company must be a camouflage occupation. It probably doesn't even exist. I wanted to find out, so I looked for a phone. There's only one phone and it's in the teacher's office. Fortunately, the teachers were chatting in the hallway, looking at the gardeners. It was now or never. I made sure nobody was watching me go into the teacher's office and I rushed in, grabbed the phone, or, and grabbed the phone on the principal's desk. I went, over the, I, I went over the phone number in my head and dialed it up. My excuse for all my little slip-ups so far this episode is that I'm actually really exhausted. I'm glad they have a touch-tone phone. It would have been difficult if it was a rotary dial. If somebody answered, I'd only have to ask, is this the Okonogi Gardeners? I'd wait for the answer before hanging up. It should be easy. It connected. I felt a cold chill run through my body from the bottom of my feet. Wait, don't make a quick judgment. I might have remembered the number wrong. No, I know I remembered it right. It was an easy number to remember. It's impossible to remember it wrong. Then did I dial it wrong? I put the phone down and started over. This time I dialed the number more slowly. The teachers might be coming back at any time. In that situation, it was risky to do anything slowly. But I needed to make absolutely sure. I strongly feel like she memorized the number incorrectly. It's the same. There's no doubt. My company, Okonogi Gardeners, doesn't exist. It's just a camouflage occupation for the Sonozaki family's death squad. I was too stunned to put down the receiver. The announcement kept running over and over again. The voice was cold and creepy. I hung up the phone and rushed out of the teacher's office. I ran to the bathroom and held my head in an attempt to cool down. Calm down, Rena. Calm down, Rena Ryugu. Stay cool. Rena Ryugu. I wasn't safe here anymore. If I stayed here, I might be erased, even in the open. They'd erase me? Why? They aren't certain that I have the scrapbooks. I told Keichi-kun where I hid the scrapbooks. Yesterday, I told him I hid them in my hideout in the garbage dump. Is Keichi-kun in cahoots with the Sunazaki family? I felt as if my head was a pot that was cooking some dubious stew. There was only soup in my brain. I cut up clues, information, and facts just like I'd cut vegetables and threw them into the pot. Some of them were floating on the surface, and others were on the bottom of the pot. They were being cooked in a boiling soup. No, it can't be. Keichi-kun is on my side. He's the only one who's on my side. He held out his hand to me in that ch or at the trash piles. There was no lie in that hand. When he grabbed my wrist, I felt nothing but his strong and pure heart. He promised me he'd be on my side. I shouldn't doubt Keichi-kun. He's the only one I should trust. He's the only one who is on my side right now. This fucking hurts. I said it out loud on purpose, full of regret that I doubted Keichi-kun. The only one who is on my side. Now that I think about it, whether I have the scrapbooks or not might not matter to them. Erase anyone who is suspicious. That's the safest way. Does that mean they're in a hurry? The day of Oyashiro-sama's revival might be just around the corner. And that's why they're trying to get rid of any small fish bones that are stuck in the throat by any means before it's too late. We don't need her anymore. Just erase her if you're worried so much. I could easily picture Oryo Sonozaki saying that. Picture? No, she did say that. That's why they're here today. That's- what should I do? What should I do? Should I wait until school is over? I was like a fish in a pond. No matter how many times I escaped from the net, I was in the pond. And they own the pond. I didn't stand a chance. Then what should I do now? I couldn't keep escaping from the net. I should get out of the pond. I didn't know how to fight them. I didn't know who was on my side. I was about to give in to despair. For now, I'd have to think about how to survive this. So I'd have at least or so I'd at least have time to think about how to fight against them. I have to get out of this pond. When I was about to leave the bathroom, one of my classmates came in. I pretended to be sick and talked to the girl while leaning on the wall. 
I shouldn't let Shia Sensei know that I'm leaving school early if I'm trying to run away from them. But if I didn't, they might think I ran away without cause. That might lead them to chase after me without mercy. If that happens, I don't stand a chance. They were planning to capture me after school is over, but I happened to feel sick and left school early. If they took it that way, they wouldn't think that I noticed the news tightening around me. I was about to go back to the classroom to get my bag, but I changed my mind and turned around. I didn't need my bag anymore. I realized nobody was watching me, so I stopped pretending to be sick and started running. Holy shit. This really just does remind me of Keiichi. Of how just fucking distrustful he was. Like, I, I don't know how to explain it. Oh my god. ちょっと請求書の日付が空欄になっておりますぞ。ここは今日の日付ではないのですかな。ああ、そこはお役所の都合らしいんです。三森署の日付と請求書の日付が同じだと、なんだか都合が悪いそうで、署務係さんから空
The delusional parasitosis mentioned earlier can be considered a secondary delusion. A common factor of all cases of paranoia is that even after an outbreak they still appear perfectly normal with no change in their personalities. The patients are unaware of their own ailments and due to their personal interpretations of their delusional system, there are many cases where patients or where patients arm themselves logically, excuse me, making it extremely difficult for a third party to point out that they're having a delusion. Furthermore, although it may depend on the tendency of the delusions, there are also cases where a persecutory delusion turns into a pursuit delusion or a conspiracy delusion, resulting in the patient creating an imaginary enemy and taking up antisocial behavior. For example, there are cases where believers of a religious cult were deeply influenced by the cult founder's paranoid visions, which shifted the group into a conspiracy delusion, and that made them conduct antisocial behavior in the same or in the name of self-defense. Although no such cases have been reported in Japan yet, it could very well happen in the near future. Fortunately, the patient hasn't reached that serious condition as of now. Uh, yeah, well, she has, like, now, now. With proper treatment, she should be able to make a full recovery. Yeah, that didn't happen. Please make sure that her father also understands that this is not an unusual case, but something caused by the accumulation of a number of innocent factors that anyone could have. The patient can be treated only by deepening her bond with her father. As long as she has that bond, she can certainly be treated. For the reasons above, if the patient is to return to her home village, I strongly recommend that the patient continue to receive guidance from specialized medical in institutions. Please excuse me for writing such a long letter. Thank you for reading this until the very end. And I still want some food. Yeah, so... Okay, that definitely exp it, it explains Rena's case right now, and it definitely explains that delusions are at work and have been at work in a lot of cases here, in in all of uh, Higurashi so far. Uh, Shion most definitely was a victim of these delusions, thinking that Satoshi's ghost was following her around like a goddamn Tamagotchi character. And that Keiichi was probably having a lot of delusional situations in Chapter 1, thinking that there were a lot of enemies that may not have been enemies. Shit, maybe even the fucking syringe that he was given by his friends, who seemed, you know, very malicious and, and crazy as fuck, if you guys remember, in the end of Chapter 1, that may not have actually been the case. That could have all just been a false perspective coming off of Keiichi, and he he may have just lost his fucking shit. I don't know. It, it, it's hard to say. That could have been the same with fucking Tomatake. I don't know. There, there's a lot of what-ifs, and there's a lot of dots being connected here, or at least a lot of similarities in events. They were mowing the grass near the fence, which was probably a cover to monitor the surroundings, just in case I tried to escape from the school. But they must have been thinking that would happen only after school was over. They seemed to have no idea that I'd already noticed their plan and was trying to run away right at that very moment. I couldn't use the front gate since they'd find me easily. I moved behind the school building, made sure nobody was around the curry garden, ran through it, and dashed into the forest. Really glad we had to point out that that was a curry garden. I walked through the dense undergrowth, stepping on dead wood and climbing over fallen trees. After walking through the forest for a while, I came to a small road. I know many back roads in this village because of our club activities, and that knowledge had finally come in handy. So what should I do now? I'm sure the girl already passed on my message to Chie-sensei. Those men must be going crazy by now, knowing that I ran away. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm glad we actually get to see what's going on. <laughs> God damn, let me get a fucking drink. Everybody in the class looked at each other and shook their heads. Chie-sensei looked a bit upset that Rena left school early without telling her in person. Rena, 
カバンなんかも置きっぱなしだしどうしちゃったんだろうなんだか嫌な予感がするぜえ I think I know what's going on. I'm not sure, but I have a very bad feeling about this. She must have taken another ridiculous story seriously or something. I hope she won't do anything crazy. Yep, I got a bad feeling. I hurried home. My father might be at his new job or he might have gone shopping. He wasn't around when I got there. Is the text actually redder? Or is that just my imagination? Jumping from the white text to the. This text is probably going to make it seem darker. Now that they're on the move, I'm no longer safe in my, in my house. They're very dangerous people. They're trained to be capable of attacking the Ministry of Construction, and they actually pulled off the kidnapping of the grandson of the minister. Locked doors and windows don't mean anything to them. In fact, it'd be like I was hiding in a box, which they could just open up to get at me. I could no longer stay at my home. It's very sad and very frustrating. I killed Rina and Tepe and finally regained a peaceful life with my father. How could this happen to me? I remembered what Keichi Kun told me before. It expressed my feelings better than anything. Why did she give me those terrifying scrapbooks? Why did she tell me the secret of that unthinkable conspiracy? She got me into this. I didn't do anything. It's all Mio san's fault. But who was interested in her stories? I was. Who let her continue talking? I did. I did that out of curiosity. Who let the memories of Ibaraki return and told Mio san about them? I did. I depended on Mio san, hoping that she could somehow save me from the memories I'd been trying to forget. I shouldn't have remembered anything about the bizarre incident. If I hadn't, I wouldn't have gotten myself involved in that unthinkable conspiracy, and I could have just. Played around with my friends today. But even if I didn't know about that conspiracy, it'd still continue behind the scenes. I would have been one member of the mob running in a panic, not knowing what's going on. On the day of Oyashiro Sama's revival, I would have just been swallowed up in their conspiracy anyway. I, or would I be happier if I faced that day without knowing anything? Would I be happier if I struggled, knowing about it but ending up swallowed by it? If I'm going to end up the same way no matter what I choose to do, I'll fight. I'll choose to fight. Because that's how I seized my happiness before. When Rina invaded my house, seducing my father, I felt like it was the end of the world. I lived on the verge of despair every day. I thought that was the worst misfortune that could befall anyone. But the way things are going, it wasn't really that bad at all. I had only two enemies, Rina Mamiya and Tepe Hojo. I knew my enemies, and I knew how many there were. I lured them out one by one and I attacked them in the dark. It was a very easy problem to solve. But what about this one? I don't know who my enemies are, and I don't know how many or how strong they are. Even the people I once trusted might be the enemies. I can't possibly be sure. It's totally different from the previous problem. This might be the end of the world. This time, it really was the worst thing that could possibly happen. But is that really the case? With Rina, I felt like it was the end of the world, but I no longer think it was that bad. So this might turn out to be an easy problem to solve in the end, and I might be able to laugh about it someday. I know that day will come. I know it for sure. So I shouldn't think that this is the end of the world. Let's fight. I can fight. I can still struggle. I'd eat grass and drink mud if I needed to. I'm going to bet on the 1% chance, even though it's unbelievably small. If Mio san didn't leave me the scrapbooks, I wouldn't even have been able to sit at the table to bet. I was lucky that I received the scrapbooks because they gave me the chance to choose my future. If I don't fight, they'll spread the terrible parasite, and this village will face a great disaster. According to the legend, when the demons first came out of the swamp, people became demons right after being infected. And it happened while they were inside the village. These days, symptoms appear only when infected people leave the village. But that only applies to the later, weak parasite. The original parasite can reenact the curse of a Yashiro-sama, even when the infected are in the village. 
The legend of Oyashiro-sama will be reborn. Humans and demons will start killing each other, and Oyashiro-sama will come down to pacify the disaster. That's what they want. They want people to prostrate themselves before that miracle, and only the people who truly worship Oyashiro-sama will be saved. I see. I know their true intention now. They're going to reenact the legend of Oyashiro-sama. After all, the villagers always say that Rikachan is his reincarnation. The stage is all set. They're going to use the parasite as the curse. So how are they going to make it look like Oyashiro-sama came down to pacify everyone? I get it. They must have some kind of medicine, a specific cure for the parasite. When they recreated the stronger form of the parasite, they found a cure for it at the same time. They're going to use this cure to save only those people who believe in Oyashiro-sama. And as a result, this village will only have those fervent believers. They're going to make themselves the absolute rulers of Hinamizawa. Wait, I still might be underestimating them. Are they going to carry out that horrifying act of bioterrorism only inside Hinamizawa? History proves that when their goal is to control others, people desire to spread their religion across a wide area. I'm sure that they conducted research not only to bring back the primitive form of the parasite, but also to overcome its weakness. Namely, that it only thrives in Hinamizawa. According to Mio-san's research, the parasite doesn't like its hosts to be far from the region. Its weakness is distance. If they could extend the distance, if they could extend the area where it can live, I wonder how far along their research is. By now, the parasite might be able to live not only in Hinamizawa, but in Okinomiya as well. Or maybe even in the city? Maybe the whole prefecture? It might be able to cover nearby prefectures as well. This is too serious to just call it a conspiracy. It's horrifying enough, and its scale large enough to call it a revolution. The day of revival is probably not far off. I can tell by now that they killed Mio-san, and by the extent of their pressure they're putting on me. They're trying to get rid of the small fish bones stuck in their throat by any means, because that day is coming ever closer. I'm the only one who can stand up against the revolution. I can't trust anybody. I think I can trust Keichi-kun, but no one else. Mi-chan is out of the question. I can't trust Rika-chan either. Sotoko-chan and Rika-chan stick together like super glue, and I can't trust Sotoko-chan either. I can't trust any adults. I can't trust anybody. No one is on my side. I have to stand up against them alone. The clock is ticking towards that day, and the ticking noise made me frustrated. How should I fight against them? What should I do? I needed time to think. I needed a place, a safe area, where I could concentrate on thinking. Fortunately, I had such an area already. My hideout at the garbage dump. Nobody ever goes there, so it's safe. Even if they found out about that place, I'm familiar with its surroundings. I know escape routes and places where I can hide. But it has a big shortcoming as a hiding place. It's not hard to imagine what that is. I don't have any stock of food there. And that's why I came home. I opened one of my father's drawers and took out his cash box. The contents haven't changed since the last time I looked inside. There were many new 10,000 yen bills in the cash box. I took them all. I couldn't tell how many bills there actually were, but it looked to be about 80 of them. This should be plenty. If I evaded them long enough to use all this money, that would mean that I did pretty well. Plus, I might be able to use it to buy someone off. You can never have too much money, especially in a situation like this. I didn't take the bank book. If they were waiting in ambush at the bank, I'd be done for. It's too risky to withdraw money at the bank. I grabbed my backpack. I took the key from my bicycle. I put everything I think would be convenient to have into the backpack. I didn't care if it got heavy. I'd choose what was necessary to carry around later at my hideout. If there ended up being something I didn't need, I could leave it there. I looked at the clock. It had been 30 minutes since I came home. I stayed here too long. I rushed out of the house. Wow. Everything that's going on right now just reminds me 
of when Keiichi was making his rash decisions in previous chapters. My god. Okay, we're gonna end it there. I'm still, like, really exhausted, and, uh... Yeah, we'll, uh... We'll, we'll see what, what Rena does in the next one. I, uh... I do have a theory, though. If delusions are having a part here, and the text is getting more and more red, could that mean that she's becoming more and more delusional the redder that the text becomes? And could that also mean that the scrapbooks that she read actually didn't say a lot of the things that she thought they said? Sure, there might be some wacky-ass Takano-san theories, but what if they're not exactly what we think they're like? What if there's actually no maggots or anything involved that tries to connect what Rena was going through back then? Like, sure, there might be something going on here in the village. I, I really don't doubt that. But probably not in the way that she was hoping. I don't know. It's just a, a wild guess. Since a lot of it did not really make sense to Keiichi when he actually said it out loud. And Mion negated a lot of it. Oh, excuse me, or countered a lot of it. And I don't really trust a lot of what she said either. There's, there's a whole lot going on, my god. But thank you all for watching this episode. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that fancy jazz, and I will catch you all in the next one. Take it easy.